Hey y'all, I'm getting ready to uh, send out some videos to y'all that I hope will be an, an encouragement to everybody, but then, but specifically to fathers and to mothers. And what I want to do is I want to read to you from some different passages from this biography. Um, it's a biography of John G. Patton, missionary to the New Hebrides. <clears throat> um, I'll explain that in just a minute, but uh, the reasoning real quick, the, the reason I want to do that is... Um, I've wanted to encourage fathers and mothers in this way for a while, uh, um, but with the recent coronavirus stuff, this just kind of seemed like a good time to do it. And part of that's because of, of uh, some of the encouragement we've been giving the church lately. So, so one thing that we've been saying is that uh, that we desire that in this season, this unusual season of not being able to meet together with the church as much as we would would love, um, as we would desire, that in this season that Grace Community Church would grow in family religion. Um, and we desire that. We desire that we would grow in, in what we call it on Sunday, family re religion. And so let me just say some things from the beginning about what we mean by that. So when, when I think when most people think about family religion, um, you know, they think about uh, specifically that, that time, uh, uh, you know, that you spend, that, that maybe a, a husband, a father spends where he's reading the Bible to his family, he's praying with his family, maybe singing with his family, but... but they're worshiping Jesus together, um, and and I think that's important. I think that's important to think through that. Um, you know how you're gonna read the Bible to your family and pray with your family. Uh, but that's not all I mean when I think of family religion. That's not even the most foundational thing that I mean. Um, you know, when it comes to 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 doing that, that specific you know family devotion time. You know, we don't have a lot in the scripture that gives us the, the specific uh, methods of how that should be done. Now, I, I want to encourage the church. I want to encourage all of you, uh, all, you know, all of you families. I want to encourage you to take time every day. You know, however you do it, whatever time you do it, there's no specific, specified method in the scripture. But however you do it, take time every day to, to read the Bible uh, to your family, to pray with your family, um, just to lead your family in that sort of way. I want to encourage you to do that. Um, but, you know, be careful looking at other people and, and seeing, uh, you know, I, I need to do it exactly like that person. Because, again, th the methods aren't lined out for us in, in the scriptures, are they? Um, and so if you're not careful, you know, you'll start thinking, you know, you're really godly if you do it after dinner like so-and-so does. And, and then you'll have this um, really a, a, an inaccurate mindset that I've got to be ready to sit down for two hours, you know, and have a sermon ready for my family every night. And I just don't think that that's... Um, you know, reason, reasonable or attainable. So we want to call you to, to you know, even if it's 10, you know, 15 minutes every day to read the Bible, pray with your family for sure. Um, but the way that's going to look for different families throughout the church is going to be different. And the reason for that, again, is that we've got scripture about how fathers and mothers' uh, uh, responsibilities they have toward their children, but not the specific means to do that. So here's what I mean. Uh, you know, Deuteronomy 6 it says, these words I command you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Um, Ephesians 6, 4 uh, tells fathers to bring up their children in the training and the admonition of the Lord. So when you think about being a godly parent, it doesn't need to be on, am I you know, conducting a family worship time like that guy? Um, as much as it should be, are you obeying Deuteronomy 6 and Ephesians 6, 4? Um, uh, and, you know, again, the, the, the means or methods or way you do that uh, can look different in different families. But are you doing that? Are you bringing them up in the training and admonition of the Lord? Are you, are you, are you, has your, is your home just consumed with the Word of God, like it says there in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 8? Um, and so, and so, when I think about us as a church growing in family religion, um, I don't just mean that time. I encourage you to think about that time, but not just that time. Uh, but I want to talk about things or, or encourage you in ways that, that, that really get underneath that, that are deeper than that, that are more foundational. Uh, you know, your integrity in your own home. Um, you know, you're a godly example to your family, loving your children well. Um, you know, a lot of things we could, you know, Proverbs 20 verse 7 says, A righteous man walks in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. So, so I want to I mention some things like, like that that are a little more foundational. And the way that I want to get to that, 
and these videos I want to send to you is by, like I said, reading some portions from this missionary biography. Now, like I said, John G. Patton, he was, uh, he was born in 1824, uh, died in 1907. He was a Scottish missionary. Uh, now, he went to med school for a little while, and then he was a city missionary for a little while, and then he felt at some point like God was leading him to go to the unreached, to the New Hebrides, uh, um, among, amongst a, a, a group. Uh, a lot of them at this time, they called them this heathen group, you know, and they were very cannibalistic. It was just a really hard place to go. In fact, there were some missionaries that went there uh, prior to John Patton going there that as soon as they got there, they were killed and they were eaten, as horrible as that sounds. Um, and it put a lot of fear in people. And so he got a lot of pushback um, as a missionary wanting to go there for a time. You know, people would tell him, you're going to be eaten by cannibals. You shouldn't do that. And, and yet the Lord led him in that direction and God gave him fruit uh, in that. And so I want to read some portions, but here's the thing. I don't want to just read about John Patton. Uh, what I really want to get to as far as an, an encouragement towards family religion and an encouragement towards uh, fathers and mothers is, is the glimpse we get of John Patton's mom and dad, <laughs> um, especially in the beginning of the book and then really scattered throughout the book. I mean, we see things about, uh, you know, his dad's uh, and his mom's personal piety. You know, we see things about uh, the way they uh, uh, strove to to make their children to be a part of, of the church, you know, and um, you know we see things about uh, when everybody else was telling them not to go on the mission field, the advice that mom and dad gave them. You know, it's just really sweet stuff that I think could be an encouragement to us as parents. So what I want to do over the next several videos that that we'll send out is I want to read a uh, a portion from here from this biography and um, or this autobiography. And then, and then I want to um, uh, just make a few comments, and I hope that your soul will be encouraged in this time, and um, I hope everybody would be encouraged, but especially you moms and dads. I love y'all, and um, hope this is an encouragement, and I can't wait to get back to normal.